Hi, this is Nauta, flyweightadvisory.com. Remember, the words you hear here are only an opinion from a complete stranger online. Hey, all due respect to my man Dwyer. Shout outs to him. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. Okay, so I just wanted to, um, I guess, you know, it's, I guess, it might be only um, satisfactory that my, uh, I guess, my return to YouTube since uh, I've been uh, gone for a little while would come uh, talking about Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. So, Gonzalez, you know, his comeback here uh, tonight on the undercard of Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin Part 2 is, uh, you know, it's a, it's been a little bit under the radar, a little bit um, overshadowed, I think, by some of the, um, I guess, maybe like the, the, the boxing slash kind of crossover pop cultural um, significance of, of Canelo and Golovkin, even though neither have necessarily lit the world on fire insofar as um, their overt accomplishments in the actual sport as compared to Chocolatito. But be that as it may, um, Chocolatito is going to be making his comeback today. Uh, against Moises Fuentes, one Moises Fuentes who actually had ended the career way back when of Ivan Calderon, one of the all-time great um, strawweight slash light flyweight fighters. Um, you know, the, the, the weight classes where Roman Gonzalez was arguably at his best, arguably um, in his prime as compared to right now, where, um, you know, it's, it's really a big question mark as to um, the condition that he's going to be in. Following the two losses, two streets against a rung beside, following the near loss against Carlos Cuadras, following just a career of um, relatively rough and tumble fights, um, whereby, you know, not even necessarily that he like took a lot of damage in all, all the fights, but especially in the last few that he had had, he definitely, um, he definitely accrued a bit of, of mileage. Um, much more so than he probably had at any other point in his career other than maybe the the Juan Francisco Estrada fight years ago. Um, and of course, you know, you could see that beyond the Estrada fight, he was able to uh, pretty comprehensively defeat virtually every opponent until he managed to uh, um, start fighting against the Superflies. Um, but here against Moises Fuentes, he's going to be fighting a guy who himself is a former champion, former um, WBO strawweight champion. And a former uh, title contender, both at light flyweight and flyweight. Um, Moises Fuentes wasn't able to quite get over that hump at light flyweight and flyweight, primarily because of the fact of of who he was fighting against. I mean, he was fighting against Dani Nietes, um, Kosei Tanaka, and Daigo Higa. And in with regards to Nietes and uh, and Tanaka, I mean Nietes. I think anybody that's watched Superfly uh, two and three. Um, can see the quality of him, you know, three weight champion. Um, he should have been a four weight champion after the uh, Aston Palikte fight, but um, I mean, I guess the the judges thought otherwise for whatever reason. Um, and then Kosei Tanaka, a guy that um, is has been a bit of a, a virtuoso kind of prodigal fighter at the lighter weight classes at the flyweights, um, whereby you know he was able to very quickly in succession win titles at 105 and 108 pounds, and he will be shortly uh, from now, uh, I think in, in about a month taking on Shokimura for the WBO flyweight title and um, he would uh, uh, wind up actually um, quote-unquote tying but technically actually breaking the record of uh, Vasyl Lomachenko with regards to the um, fewest number of fights to three world weight class titles um, because uh, Vasyl Lomachenko does have the World Series of Boxing fights which were technically professional fights um, previous to his um, exploits that are actually... Um, dictated on box rec whereas the the world series of boxing ones are not um but uh kosei tanaka has no such fights uh but um in lieu of that uh like i'm saying fuentes only fought and lost two um pound for pounders recently um tanaka um nietes <clears throat> and then um daigo higa daigo higa a guy that was a uh very vicious fighter at flyweight a guy that um only recently lost himself to uh, Christopher Rosales, who's actually uh, Roman Chocolatito's cousin. And um, other than that, I mean, he does also have a loss to a guy that's more of a journeyman, a guy named Ulysses Lara. He lost the majority decision in their first fight, a controversial uh, majority decision. But in their second fight, he came back and knocked him out in the first round. Um, the significance of this fight here tonight is um, there's a couple of things. I mean, it's really about how much does Roman Gonzalez have left um, what his mindset is like, what his physical shape is like, um, has the wear and tear caught up to him, has his career caught up to him, maybe he's been a bit complacent more recently because of the fact that he can make the weight easier, he can make super flyweight relatively easy, and he can, you know, 
he he's living in the in the co- um, comparative luxury now compared to where he first came up at. Um, you know, he's he's made more money than virtually any um, kind of uh, strawweight slash flyweight fighter has in the last few years, other than um, fighters from Japan. But um, at least at fighter excluding fighters from Japan and maybe Zosha Ming, he's made uh, as much or more money than any other fighter in those weight ranges since um, the likes of uh, of a Michael Carbajal and um, a Jorge Arce and uh, Rosendo Alvarez, who were themselves kind of crossover stars um, beyond just the just the sport of boxing itself as well. So I mean, he he's been a bit of like the um, the kind of the. The uh the the rainmaker the guy that really brings the 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 interest and the cash to the to the lighter weight classes recently especially, but um really you know it's a, it's it's going to be interesting to see exactly how he looks against Fuentes. Um, Fuentes is a guy that I think, in spite of his recent KO losses to Higa and to Tanaka, um, the Higa loss was I think stopped a bit prematurely. Um, he really should have gotten the opportunity to continue, and I think he could have given at the very least a good fight. I wouldn't have necessarily picked him to beat Higa, because you know Higa, not unlike Chocolatito himself, was looking like a just a, a vicious fighter, just an absolute um, physical like force of of reckoning. And um, also, the, there's the the argument to be made potentially that you know maybe he was draining himself. Um, you know he's a guy that's five foot seven, and to be making 105, 108 pounds, even 112 pounds at, at that height. Is um you know you're probably going to be taking something out of yourself in order to make those weight classes, and you can even kind of see it in his physique and those weights, um at the weigh-ins and versus in the fight, and then compared to um yesterday where he and uh, Gonzalez actually weighed in, um so I think Fuentes looms as a a potentially dangerous challenge to Gonzalez should Gonzalez not necessarily be not even a hundred percent of his former self, but even fifty or eighty or sixty percent of his former self. I think Fuentes still looms. Uh, a, as, a, as a good degree of danger. He is a relatively hard puncher. He's very tall, good reach, good range. Um, but he's a guy that has um, failed in the past against guys that are the level of a Gonzalez, which is, which is why I refer back to Nietes, to Higa, to, um, to Tanaka, because Nietes and Tanaka are both um, of the skill set, um, I'd say a caliber just below where Gonzalez was at, um, at the very least in his prime anyway, or even like maybe even still now, uh, depending on exactly how he looks uh, pending tonight. And um, Higa is a, is a physical force that I think may have even been more um, vicious than, than a, a Gonzalez in his prime, just by virtue of Higa being a naturally bigger guy than, than Gonzalez um, generally has been. You know, Higa, by, before it's all said and done, will probably eventually be a, like a super bantamweight even. Um, I could see him going as high as that. But, um, yeah, Roman Gonzalez versus uh, Moises Fuentes. Uh, Fuentes is a very big underdog, and he's been a big underdog before. He was a big underdog against Ivan Calderon when he um, be- effectively ended Calderon's career. He was a big, big underdog against Raul Garcia when he actually fought um, against Garcia for the world title at strawweight for his, his single uh, singular world title shot, um, or his initial world title shot and the singular world title that he actually won where he defeated Raul Garcia by a split decision. Um, arguably beat Donnie Nietes back in their first fight, but of course he was stopped in the second fight against uh, Nietes. He's a dangerous fighter. Um, he, he does a good punch, uh, but he's a, he's a bit of a, what I've referred to in the past as a glass cannon. You know, He can kind of give it, but can't necessarily take it in kind. So while um, he might loom as a, as a kind of a punching threat, to Gonzalez, especially if maybe Gonzalez's chin has been cracked a bit, maybe um, Gonzalez's stamina has been cracked a bit, maybe he's just not um, training as hard as he used to. You know, now that he's uh, he, you know, he, he he probably doesn't have to work another day in his life if he if he didn't want to. I mean, um, and then also there's um, a lot of outside the ring things to uh, look at with regard to this fight as well. Um, supposedly, um, Roman Gonzalez is getting a lot of heat down in his home country of Nicaragua due to his support of the president down there. Um, it looks like the uh, like public sentiments have really shifted against um, the current, I guess, standing guard of uh, of uh, of Nicaragua's um, bureaucracy. And um, considering the fact that Gonzalez is one of the big, uh, probably the, one of the most famous, if not the most famous, supporter of Nicaragua's current president, he's uh, probably the receptor of a, of a lot of heat from from the public, from the fandom, and um, from some things that I've read is that. Uh, there's actually quite a few people, quite a few of his countrymen from Nicaragua rooting for Fuentes to actually beat Gonzalez uh, due to that. 
Um, I'm not as in tune to the entirety of the politics as to why, um, you know, public sentiments have turned on the, both the president down there as well as Gonzalez himself. But, um, you know, it's something that to keep in mind, you know, maybe his mind won't completely be on the fight itself. And that might um, get in the way of of his uh, train that might have gotten in the way of his training and it might get in the way of his performance in the fight as well, which um, would give uh, Fuentes even that much more opportunity to potentially upset the odds. Um this isn't me outright picking Fuentes to beat Gonzalez, but I'm just saying that, you know, um, you guys might be, want to be aware of that, um, especially if uh, you have the ability to um, put some money down on the fight. Maybe uh, drop something that's very, um, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not, um, that you wouldn't miss on, on, on Fuentes because uh, the return would be uh, quite large um, considering the, as big of an underdog he, as he is. Um, and considering the fact that it looks like the, the bookkeepers haven't necessarily learned their lesson from past instances of actually um, underrating Fuentes or maybe they just forgot who the guy was which is unfortunate and more than likely unfortunate for them um, if uh, if Gonzalez has let these other issues get in the way of his uh, performance and his uh, training for his comeback um, I do think that Gonzalez should be able to beat Fuentes even if he's about 60 or 70 percent of his former self he should be able to knock out Fuentes in six or seven rounds you know, Fuentes is a guy that um, he kind of uh, tires out towards the mid rounds. He'll get, he'll catch a second win. He'll be able to finish out the fight against um, most opposition, but not necessarily. I don't think against like the true elites of uh, of the lighter classes of the of the, of the fly classes, um, as has been shown in the past with Tanaka, with Nietes, etc. Um, so Gonzalez should be able to uh, beat Fuentes, but if he doesn't, um, just uh, there's one person here that definitely won't be surprised, um, considering. Um, all that he's been through, um, both inside and outside the ring recently, as well as considering um, the the danger that Fuentes has shown in the past, especially when he's heavily underrated and underestimated. So that's going to do it for this one, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.